This is part three of my series on pressors and sedation in the ICU. In the first two parts, we talked about pressors and sedation and analgesia. Today, we're going to be talking about paralytics in the ICU. So let's get started. So there's a couple things right off the bat that I wanted to you know, address. So paralysis, there were a couple trials that are kind of important here. So accuracy was a trial that showed that uh, paralysis did have a mortality benefit. Uh, but interestingly, I believe in 2019, there was this ROSE trial, which said, said that paralysis really didn't have a mortality benefit in the first 48 hours. And the reason we paralyze people is so they can tolerate the ventilator better. So basically you're paralyzing all their muscles. They're not gonna be able to fight against the ventilator and the machine is gonna start doing all the breathing for them. And so this really helps you reduce the pressures in the ventilator, reduces ventilator dysynchrony, and overall that's why it's thought to improve mortality. Uh, but again, we've got these two trials, one showing that there is a mortality benefit and one not showing that there's a mortality benefit. The big things for paralysis is that you really, really, really need to make sure that the patient is sedated because uh, imagine the PTSD you're gonna have if your patient is not sedated and you paralyze them and they can't move anything, uh, that would just be a horrifying experience. So you need to make sure they're sedated. And usually we aim for a lower rascal in these patients. Some things that we check for uh, to see how paralyzed they are is train of four. Um, so this is when you give some electrical signals down to uh, some of their peripheral nerves and see if they have finger twitching. And so usually we aim for two twitches, which shows that they're relatively paralyzed. Uh, if they have two twitches, they're about 80% paralyzed. And the other thing to know is that there's something called the bispectral index, which is something where you can attach a bunch of electrodes onto their head and you can actually see how sedated somebody is. So uh, it depends on if your hospital has this or not, but that's a good way to know if a patient is adequately sedated in order to get paralysis. Biggest downside of paralysis is really going to be ICU myopathy. Uh, patients, if they're not moving a single muscle, are really going to get uh, very, very bad myopathy, and it's going to take them a really long time to recover. Uh, so prolonged muscle recovery is definitely something you should expect in patients who are paralyzed. The agents we're going to use is going to be cis atra curium. This is the most common one you'll see in drip form. It's also known as Nimbex. And then usually uh, we have this shorter acting one, which is more frequently used as a push. Uh, this is called rocuronium or zemuron. And finally, another one that you may see is vecuronium. The most common doses you're going to see is a drip of 0 0.15 to 0 0.2 uh, milligrams per kilogram per hour. And then for rocuronium pushes, usually it's a weight-based dose, uh, something like 0 0.6 milligrams per kilogram. Okay, and that's basically it for pressors, sedation, analgesia, and paralysis. That's basically everything you need to know in order to manage these basic medications when you're in the ICU. The real simple way that I like to remember it is basically the way that I outlined it for you. So when I have a patient that just comes in getting intubated, the one, the medications that I basically immediately order right off the bat is going to be norepinephrine, propofol, and fentanyl. Okay, so it's a very easy way to categorize which are the first ones that we use and then what do we go down, uh, you know, as second line agents after that, especially accounting for the different side effects that each of these medications have. But definitely first line, norepinephrine, fentanyl, and propofol are going to be your best starting bets. Remember for sedation that you want to use the RAS scale to titrate how sedated the patient is. And then for paralysis, you really need to make sure patients are sedated. You want to check, check their train of four, their bispectral index, and also know that mortality benefit is kind of questionable. Um, uh, but we still do it very frequently because of ventilator dyssynchrony. And the biggest risk of paralysis is going to be ICU myopathy. All right, I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section down below. Again, like I said, this is one of the best teaching topics for teaching your interns and medical students. It's very interactive. You ask them exactly what they know, and then you can fill in the gaps. And it's also a very easy talk to do because uh, you have used these medications so much yourself already that uh, you can freely talk about them and all the differences between them as well. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this content and want to see more and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.